you a pirate. Pride, tradition, passion. Be proud of who you are and what you are. You're pirates. When they face adversity, plant their feet, take a brace, hit them right in the jaw, and say, bring it on. Want some, get some. ECU Athletics and U.S. Cellular present The Ruffin McNeil Show. The Ruffin McNeil Show is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. And now, in his 25th season, the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the Ruffin McNeil Show for the Pirates. Another installment in that long-running series against the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. East Carolina went down there on Saturday and played USM at the Rock MM Roberts Stadium. We'll have highlights of that one. Justin Hardy, number two. What a great career he's having already at East Carolina. A local kid. We'll take an up-close and personal look at number two. Camp Connors will also be by. Jeff Connors, strength and conditioning coach of ECU football, has another installment for us. And also coming up on our show, we will have a look ahead to North Carolina. The Tar Heels and the Pirates coming up on Saturday, 3.30 now will be kickoff time at Chapel Hill. Coach Ruff will join me right after this. We'll be right back with more of the Ruff and McNeil Show, presented by U.S. Cellular and sponsored by Suddenlink. Bundle and save with Suddenlink. Call 1-877-807-3806 today. Cedric, it's Bruce from your old wireless company. Would you switch from U.S. Cellular back to us? We gave you this new Wonder Phone. It does everything. Does it make calls? No, but it can perform CPR, babysit your kids. It's got a pickup line generator. Um, it's got a virtual dog whistle. But does it get good reception where I need it? No, but it tells you if any of your family members are birds. Goodbye deception, hello reception. With the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular. Hello, hello better. There is a new direction in North Carolina, pointing to breakthrough discoveries, cures for disease, new opportunities for education, guiding the next generation of leaders, pointing toward a more prosperous future and a better way of life for all of us. There is a new direction in North Carolina, and it points toward tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Welcome to the Ruff and McNeil Show. Conference USA road wins are tough to come by, and especially here at the Rock in Hattiesburg. And the Pirates have now done it the last two times they've been here. And the man to my left has been the architect of both wins, Ruff and McNeil. And, Coach, congratulations. What a great team effort this one was. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it, it, was, it was what you said. Uh, it was an epitome of, of team effort. All three sides of the ball. Uh, at the first part of the game defensively and special teams did a great job of being the glue. Offense came around the second half, made some really tremendous drive and some time time consuming drives and put some points on the board. So I was very proud of the team effort. The fourth side of it, besides offense, defense and special teams, Jeff, was a sideline. Mm -hmm. It was so exciting on that sideline, which is the fourth part, especially away on the road. You want to start fast in a hostile environment, and the Rock is a hostile environment. Yeah, no doubt about that. I know we talk about it all the time, but turnovers, you guys force three turnovers. You don't turn it over. It's so big every game, isn't it? Well, I was proud of our guys. You know, that was part of the challenge, and <clears throat> excuse me, it's been a part of the challenge, and uh, offensively did a great job making great decisions with great ball security. Defense did a good job, a great job of attacking them and taking the ball and going to take the ball away. So I was proud of both sides of that. 
And that third quarter was terrific. He outscores Southern Miss 21 zip in that third quarter. Got behind in this game, 7 to nothing, and then really came back. That was big. Wanting to start fast, sustain it, and then finish. Uh, after the first half, we came back second half and said, okay, guys, we're 7-3. We have 30 minutes left. Let's start fast, sustain it, and finish in the fourth quarter. Let's now go to those first half highlights. Just over 34,000 at the Rock as we pick up action and Southern Miss with the ball. And last week, South Carolina came out through them. This week, Southern Miss comes out running the football. And, Ruff, I think you knew they would do that. Well, you know, the quarterback is a great athlete. You know, he's drafted by the Blue Jays, one of the top athletes in the, in the state. Uh, he's a runner, did a great job. He'll get better with time. But we knew they'd try to run the ball at us. And then Alfred takes it in from one yard out in Southern Mississippi. Very Early in the game, takes a 7 to nothing lead. And then the Pirate drive stalls. Southern Miss comes back with the ball again, and the Pirate defense dials it up here as Alford is thrown for a loss of four yards. Jeremy Grovey was all over the field like always. Well, I'll tell you what, that defense did a great job of playing 11-man football. They got pressure and finished plays today. Up after a couple of drops, then Andrew Bodenheimer came up with a catch here, rough 11 yards on this one on a first and 10. Yeah, those first two drops of Bodie were, were not Bodie. Uh, he's got the best hands on the team, and he was really angry at himself, but he came back and made up for it. Yeah, he really did. We go now to the second quarter, 7 0 Southern Miss with the lead, and Johnson runs for 11 yards on this one. And I'll tell you what, he's a good back, isn't he? Oh, he's a good back. They have a committee of backs. Uh, they taught me about having a committee of backs last year, and, and they still have one. And then Hester takes this carry, and there is Montice Overton. What a game the redshirt freshman from Greenville from South Central High School had for you, Coach. I was very proud of Montice. He's worked extremely hard. He's got a chance to be a special player. He stays focused, and he does everything we tell him to do. He has a chance to be as good as he wants to be. And then another big play by your defense, Chris Baker, coming back home to Mississippi, and he gets this sack here on Alford. I was so proud of Chris. Chris has practiced well, worked hard with Coach Connors. Big play today by Chris. And then another sack here by Terry Williams. Good to get the big fella back in there. It was good to see Terry get back in. He was excited. Uh, he waited his turn. He understood the punishment. Did a good job taking advantage, too, of his opportunity. And then the Pirates get the ball back, and Shane Carton throws this one complete to Justin Hardy. This one goes for nine yards. And then this was one of the biggest plays of the day, yardage-wise, as Shane hits Bodenheimer right before halftime here on this 32-yarder. Oh, that was a big throw and catch there, a big play by Andrew. Great throw by Shane. I think he bought a little time in the pocket. Great job by Shane and great connection by those two. And I know you have a lot of confidence in Warren Harvey, 54 yards, and he boots his baby through. Uh, I knew he could do it. Uh, he's got a strong leg. He's the most consistent kicker we got in camp, and he's proved it. I like Warren. Great job, Tech. We got 15 minutes for our first conference win on the road to our championship. Everybody hey, 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 take it. Hey, take it. Hey, take it. Hey. The Ruffin McNeil Show, presented by U.S. Cellular, continues with sponsorship by BB&T, sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Welcome back to the Ruffin McNeil Show. We look now at the second half highlights. And Ruff, it seemed like in this game, Alford was having a little bit of trouble throwing the ball. If you could kind of play them left-handed and make him throw, you guys are going to be in pretty good shape defensively. Well, you know, our defensive philosophy inside the house and is to stop the run and mm -hmm. affect the quarterback against any quarterback. I thought we did a good job controlling the run today and affecting the quarterback. They brought Campbell in late. He made some throws on us. But our defense did a great, great job of carrying the game plan into the game and then, and then doing a good job of doing exactly what the coaches want them to do. One of the best quarters of Pirate football in a long time. This third quarter is going to be fun to watch. Let's roll the highlights. Southern Miss gets the ball first to start the second half, and there's Montice Overton again all over the field and uh, lost for three yards on Johnson this time. Another big play. You know, great play by Montice, finishing the play. He's got so much speed, we have to make sure he's healthy and ready to go. Pirates get the ball now in the third quarter. Shane Carton shows that he can run a little bit rough. He goes for six yards on this one. Shane's very mobile. He can uh, add or extend the play for us. Good, good job by Shane right here. And this was our play of the day. Shane Carton throws a 55-yarder to Justin Hardy. The Pirates take the lead and East Carolina would never relinquish the lead from this point. That was a great throw and catch. Good job finding, finding them open, and I was uh, very happy about this play. We needed this one. Southern Miss coming back with the ball now on third down and two, and Alford is rushed, and he kicks the ball away, and there is another guy from Mississippi, Adonis Armstrong with a big play here, Coach. He gets the fumble recovery. Oh, that was big by Adonis. Those kids, Mississippi kids were excited about coming home, and like our North Carolina kids enjoy, enjoy coming home and make some big plays for us. Yeah, that was a big fumble recovery. Pirates get the ball back, and then how about Shane Carden? It opens up on the left side, and he runs it into the end zone for the touchdown. That was a great read on the zone replay by Shane. Shane has the capability of, of, of running the football as well. 
well, and great call by Lincoln, great execution by our offense. Good, good job by Shane. Pirates get a little breathing room here now. They lead 17-7. to Southern Miss coming back with the ball, and here's another big-time sack. A lot of sacks in this game from your defense, and Kyle Tudor gets this one. Well, I'll tell you what, great pressure. You know, great pass rush equals great pass coverage, and great pass coverage equals great pass rush. Good job here by Tudor. We go to the fourth quarter now. Pirates leading 17-7, to and Campbell going to work here. He gets Tracy Lampley on this one. You knew they'd make a comeback here, Ruff. This is a proud program, and they came after you here in the fourth quarter. Very, very proud program. Campbell's a great quarterback. He started the game against Nebraska. Got the opportunity today. We knew we could throw the football, and he did a good job coming in. Yeah, gave their team a lift, gave their crowd a lift, and then he hits Quentin Pierce here for a 24-yarder, and then on second down and goal from the eight-yard line, he throws complete here to triplet, and they started to get their offense going. Well, you know, they did. You know, they made some completions downfield, and Campbell's a little bit older guy, uh, understands pressure, came in, did a good job, and, uh, you know, uh, he was a tough to defend there for a minute. 24-14 our score, and again, uh, Pirates not out of the woods yet. They got a call on their defense again, and here's another new player for you, another junior college transfer. Gabe Woolard comes up, makes a big play, another sack on this play. Gabe's going to be an exciting player, a great kid, great athleticism. Uh, he's in there with Montice and, and Maurice Fall at the Sam linebacker. I expect great things out of Gabe, too. And then Terrell Stanley, redshirt freshman, comes up with still another sack, and you guys had a bunch of them. Well, Terrell's a guy that can make plays. Uh, he, he, he'll get better each week. You'll see Terrell just keep growing. He understands it. Mark Yellock's doing a great job coaching those kids up front. And a great day for the Pirates. We painted it purple in Hattiesburg, 24-14 East Carolina over Southern Miss. The first two weeks, you know, I've been the back of quarterback, and I've prepared each uh, game as I was supposed to be a starter, or I was just going to be a starter. Um, I think that helped me out a lot. Uh, just getting in here, I felt very confident from the first snap, like you said. Um, the defense played great, the offense line played good, receivers played good. I mean, it was, just, it was a great team win. What a nice job by the redshirt sophomore quarterback from Houston. His first start, he engineers the win. You couldn't ask a whole lot more, Ruff. Could not. I was proud of Shane. He was very poised on the sideline, Jeff. Uh, he was ready for his opportunity, took advantage of it. You know, you get one chance, took advantage of that of that chance. Uh, he On the sideline, he was very upbeat, and I knew he'd have a great game. He was ready all, all week long, and today at game at, at pregame, very ready to go. We talked on the radio network. Here you are in your third game of the season, and sometimes it takes a while to flush out your personnel, and now we're seeing maybe your quarterback, maybe your running back, maybe your outside linebacker in uh, Monty's Overton. Well, you know, we, it, it, everything is a developmental process. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you like for it to be instantly. And yeah. with some magic dust, but you know the quarterback position, uh, it takes time. The running back position is still a running back by committee. Mm -hmm. You know that, that position does a lot of things for us: block, receiving, and running the ball. Tate Cooper came in, did a great job. Um, and then Montice, we knew he had the talent. Yeah. Uh, he can really run. He's a, he's a, he's a, and he's a playmaker and can finish yeah. plays. So I was proud of that group. We'll have more on the Ruffin McNeil Show right after this. Now that's what I call a test drive. Silverado! The most dependable, longest lasting, full size pickups on the road. So what do you think? I'll take it. See your Carolina Chevy dealer. Now during Chevy Truck Month, get 0% APR financing for 60 months or trade up to get the 2012 Chevy Silverado All-Star Edition with a total value of $8,000. Hurry in before they're all gone. Stay tuned for more of the Ruffin McNeil Show. Brought to you in part by Pizza Hut's $10 Pizza and these local nationwide agents. Remember, Pirate fans, you can be a part of the show. It's Ask Coach Ruff, powered by U.S. Cellular. Text the word COACH to 94597. You'll be asked to submit your question to Coach Ruff. He'll pick one to answer each week. Here's Coach Ruff. Our text this week is from Greg from Greenville, and the question is, is choosing the quarterback, starting quarterback, the toughest decision for a head coach? Uh, Greg, the quarterback is, is one of the positions that gets the most attention, not one of them, but the most attention, and leadership and managing the football team and also being a, uh, a guy that represents our program off the field are very important, and, and components that go into naming that guy. And uh, So it is a tough decision, but. Uh, I always judge by uh, what a you know, young man does on the field. Is he productive? Uh, and does he make plays? And then off the field, is he carrying himself in a way that we demand? Thanks for the text, Greg, and go Pirates!
He's number two, maybe number one in your heart. Justin Hardy, what an outstanding career he's having at East Carolina. He's made such a big impact. The guy with the big hands, too. Little guy with the big hands. And our Brian Medor takes an up-close and personal look. Like so many football players at the collegiate level, Justin Hardy starred in multiple sports in high school. But Hardy stood out. He could play basketball and football. He could throw touchdowns. He could run for scores. And of course, he could catch them as well. But he also held for field goals and even served as the long snapper when asked. So you'd think, with all these talents, universities would be kicking down his door. But not so. In fact, the only offer he received was from Fayetteville State. National Signing Day came, he signed his letter of intent. But that's where the story changes. His coach sent us in a film, uh, as, as most people recall, when Ruffin got the job a week before signing day, you know, we were trying to sift through some different guys, and we got a couple calls saying, you know, I want you all to take a look at this kid. Uh, you know, we started watching film, and the first thing I said was, well, shoot, that guy's probably already going to you know, Carolina or committed somewhere else, one of our competitors. You know, we found out he's going to, to Fayetteville State. Uh, you know, we were able to get in touch with him through his coach, and uh, he made a decision to come over here and walk on, and it was a, it was a blessing to get him. I mean, it was kind of, you know, nerve-wracking, you know, uh, having only one team recruit you and whatnot, and um, it's just like being my little fire in me now that keep me going. Uh, I was pretty excited I was going to actually get a chance. You know, I've been wanting to play D1 since I was little, and them giving me a chance, I was real grateful. Being overlooked motivated Justin. He didn't just want to make the team or even just earn a scholarship at East Carolina. He wants to be great. Yeah, I think that's what fires him up a little more. You know, a lot of schools overlooked him, and you know, uh, it was one of the biggest schools let him go, and it was a huge mistake because he he's one heck of a player. Uh, it still drives you know, still like not being recruited and whatnot, and then show other team what they missed out on. I had to earn my scholarship and whatnot, so every day was like. I had to go out there and prove my best to them so I could get it. He's continued to get better. He hasn't been satisfied with the success he's had. Uh, he's continued to work hard, and I think he's just going to continue to grow and get better and better and better. And these Carolina fans, that ought, to, that ought to give them a little chill down their spine, having him for the next two and a half years here. And if his short body of work is any indication to Pirate fans, the future looks bright for this Craven County kid who almost got away. I'm Brian Medor for the Ruffin McNeil Show. Now we're going to continue with our segments on speed development today. Today we have Dayon Arrington with us, uh, one of our receivers. Uh, Dayon has really good size, uh, but he also runs well, also has a high level of strength. Uh, so today what he's going to do is he's going to demonstrate about three or four uh, drills that we uh, have in our program to improve arm rotation. Uh, what we're going to do is get the athlete to uh, get used to and feel that range of movement and also uh, work flexibility uh, and strength as a matter of fact. So here we go. Uh, we've got that lar large range of motion from the shoulder. Uh, because when we run, we don't want that wet noodle. We want that steel rod. It's going to help us to put force in the ground at the opposite leg. All right, good job. Uh, we're going to do an in and out right now. And basically what this is, is, we're trying to get a lot of foot contacts through the zone. And the way we do that is to accelerate arm rotation from the shoulder. So the terms that we use are rotate and hammer. So we're going to rotate from the shoulder, not elbow to fingertip. And we're going to hammer that nail into the wall with one smash. Okay, as he accelerates, we're going to give him the rotate command and hammer command. Rotate, hammer it back. Good job. Good arm rotation. Uh, that wraps up the drills for today. Uh, Dayon did a great job. You can see his uh, exceptional athleticism as we work through these drills. We're excited about Dayon this year. It's still uh, early in the year. And a lot of time for him to make plays. Uh, and you can see his size and strength and also uh, what he's worked on in the offseason with regard to his speed is going to be to his benefit this, this year. Camp Connors is brought to you by these local nationwide agents.
This week's Look Ahead is brought to you by the Eye Care Center, eye doctors focused on you and the official eye care provider of the Pirates. East Carolina, North Carolina coming up on Saturday, 3.30 at Chapel Hill. We know all about the coach at North Carolina now, don't we? Larry Fedora, he was at Southern Miss, now in his first year at UNC. And our Brian Meador had a chance to take a look, give us a scouting report on the game coming up this week. Two seconds to go. Here's the field goal attempt. 40. There's the snap ball down. The kick is up from 40 yards. And the kick is good! Pirates win! Duke and Duke and this with purple! Ben Hartman's last second game winner seems like a lifetime ago, as the Tar Heels have torched the Pirates over the last three contests by an average of 18 points a game. The Heels are in a transition phase under the new direction of former Southern Miss head coach Larry Fedora, but they have a cupboard full of five-star talent. They figure to make some noise in the ACC before the season is done. North Carolina has a balanced attack on offense, but the Pirates are going to have to find a way to control wide receiver Eric Highsmith. The senior from Vanceboro is always motivated to take on the Pirates. He caught a pair of touchdowns as a freshman, and he hauled in a 75-yarder last year in Greenville. Kickoff is set for 3.30. I'm Brian Meadow for the Ruffin McNeil Show. Thanks so much for being with us on the Rough and McNeil Show. We will join you again next week. Our report from Chapel Hill. Have a good week, everybody. The Rough and McNeil Show has been presented by U.S. Cellular. Hello, better. The Rough and McNeil Show is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.